On the last video, we created the state, the actions, and the reducers for the login screen, and we focused on the recovery password functionality. Now, let's implement the actions and reducers for the login functionality. As I already have the state of the login screen defined, let's go to the next step and create the actions for the login. The login as the recovery password will have three main actions. I will start exporting a constant called login that will receive the create action from Redux.js toolkit and this action will be identified with the string login. So this action will be called when the user clicks on the login button. Then we will call the login function from the authentication service which will be responsible for logging in the user. In case the authentication responds with success, then we will need to call a success action. So I'll export a constant called login success that will receive the create action of Redux.js toolkit and it will be identified by the string login success. The authentication service will return to us the logged user. So I will add to this login success action a parameter called user that will be of the type user. We will transform this parameter into an object that has a payload property and this payload property will be the actual user. But we don't have a user type in our code, so let's create it. I'll create a new folder called model, which will have all the representations we'll use in our app. Inside of this folder, I will create a new folder called user, which will have all the representations related to the user. Inside of this folder, I will create a new file called user.ts. Then I will export an interface called user. For now, I will give it an email of the type string and an ID of the type string. So now let's import this interface to our file. And that finishes the login success action. But in case the authentication responds with an error, then we'll need to call an error action. So I'll export a constant called login fail that will receive the create action of Redux.js toolkit and this action will be identified by the string login fail. This action will also receive as parameter the error returned by the authentication service. So we will transform this parameter in an object that has a payload property and this payload property will be the actual error. And this is it for now. We have the login action and two possible action responses for it. The login success action and the login fail action. Now, before we go to create the reducers, let's create the tests for each action. So I will tell npm to run my tests and to rerun them every time I change any file. As all my tests are passing, let's open the login.store.test.ts file. Let's now create a new test for the login action. First, I will create a constant called initial state that will be an object based on the app initial state for the login. Then I will create a constant called new state that will receive the result of the login reducer with that initial state and the login action. And finally, I will expect that the new state is equal to the initial state plus the error as null plus the is logged in as false plus the is logging in as true. After I save this, my test will fail. It fails because I'm not doing anything on the reducer for the logging action. So let's go to the reducer and tell the builder to add a case for the login action. This case will execute a function that receives the current state as parameter and it will return an object based on the current state plus the error as null plus the is logged in as false plus the is logging in as true. After I save this, our test will pass. Let's now create the test for the login success action. I'll copy and paste the test for the login as they are similar. I'll change its name to login success. I'll add on the initial state the property is logging in as true and I'll call the login success action. This action receives as parameter an user, so I'll create a new constant called user that will be an object with some user ID. Now I'll pass it as parameter to our login success action. Then I'll expect that the new state is based on the initial state plus the is logged in as true plus the is logging in as false. After I save this, our test will fail. 
it fails because I'm not doing anything on the reducer for the logging success action. So let's go to the reducer and tell the builder to add the case for the logging success action. In this case, we execute a function that receives the current state as parameter and it will return an object based on the current state plus the is logged in as true plus the is logging in as false. After I save this, our test will pass. Let's now create the test for the login fail action. I'll copy and paste the test for the login success as they are really similar. I'll change its name to login fail. The initial state keeps being the same and I will call the login fail action. This action receives as parameter an error, so I'll create a new constant called error that will be an object with some error. Now I'll pass it as parameter to our action. Then I'll expect that the new state is based on the initial state plus the error plus the is logged in as false plus the is logging in as false. After I save this, our test will fail. It fails because I'm not doing anything on the reducer for the login fail action. So let's go to the reducer and tell the builder to add a case for the login fail action. This case will execute a function that receives the current state as parameter and also it receives the action as parameter. It will return an object based on the current state plus the error, which we'll get from the action payload, plus the is logged in as false, plus the is logging in as false. After I save this, our test will pass. So let me now run the app for us to see what we are going to build for this application right now. We have just finished the state, the actions and the reducers for the login functionality of the login screen. Let's now do the state management of the login screen so we are going to be able to call the login action on the click of the login button, which will call the authentication service and based on this response we will call the login success action or the login fail action and do some other stuff. But this we are going to do on the next video.